Hi, my name is Mike. I'm making this video today to show the process of replacing the plastic cowl underneath the front windshield on a 2007 Chevrolet Colorado. Uh, this process should be applicable towards any uh, first generation Colorado or GMC Canyon model pickup truck. Um, I've never done this before, so this is going to be kind of a learning curve for me. Um, but first off, to show you the part I'm going to be replacing here, you can see that it's, wow, look at that, it just broke underneath my finger here. It's completely cracked and falling, rotting out. Uh, on the other side here, it's, hopefully this is focusing, it's pretty sunny out here today. Uh, it's bubbled, bubbled up from the heat, and it's also cracked and falling apart. So at first I thought this was just cosmetic. I wanted to replace it because it, you know, it looks bad. I, I look at it every day. Um, but also because it, this helps prevent water from getting into the engine compartment and obviously we don't want that. So my replacement part, I had a hard time finding this part online. The part number was, had to do a lot of Googling, but the part number is 2082072 that's the GM part number uh, I ordered this from GM parts giant uh, rock auto has it as well I think it was just a couple couple bucks more expensive there um, I also got some retaining clips um, four big ones and four little ones and actually you know I wasn't sure how many to get the only mention of this I could find online wasn't very specific. Um, it looks like it is, you know, now that, I, now that I have the part and now that I look at it, I can see that it is actually more than that. The replacement part did come with the clips at the top. Uh, however, it did not come with the clips at the bottom, so hopefully I'll be able to save and reuse a few of those. If not, I can, you know, I can drive around without a couple and drive my way down to the auto parts store, no big deal. Um, so the parts for the part numbers for the clips from my packing clip here. Looks like this from blowing away. Sorry, not too windy out today. It's better than it has been. Part number for the retainers: one five three two six four one zero and one zero one seven four two two one. I'm sticking them in the box so they don't blow away. So. I've never taken the windshield wipers off on this. The first That's the first thing I have to do. So the first thing I did here was just to remove the caps covering the windshield wiper bolts. And actually I decided to start recording while the WD-40 was soaking in. I want to loosen those up a little bit before I try to break them free. And I also, I don't know if this is necessary, but I just put some masking tape to note exactly where the windshield wipers set on the windshield so that if I have any issue lining them up, hopefully that tape will serve as a, a guide to help me line them up. So WD-40 has been soaking in for about five minutes now. Let me go ahead and stop this and uh, get the wipers off. I can't do that and hold the camera at the same time. So be back in a minute. Okay, here we are with the wiper arms off. Um, was kind of tricky fighting this big spring to push it down and pull up on it at the same time. I did do the trick of uh, loosen the bolt a little bit and then hit the wiper motor for a second just to try to, you know, break them loose a little bit. But other than having to deal with that spring, it wasn't too bad to get them off. And it does look does not look like these are keyed in any way, so I'm glad I put some tape to mark where they're supposed to go when I go to put them back on. Lots of WD-40. That helps too. For anyone who's ever tried to work on a car on videotape at the same time, it's kind of hard to do both. Um, I just wanted to turn the camera back on for one more quick second and show how I started to pull this up back here. Since it was already all cracked, I just kind of stuck my hands under here, under the underneath it and gave it a tug and it's already started pulling right up probably because it is in such bad shape it's coming up
coming off really easily. I'll probably have to stop the camera again and lift the hood to get the front bolts. Let's see if I can get the other side. So, here you can see it's completely off on the back now. And I don't know if it's going to show up on the camera, but you can see some of the little plastic push push pins. So I'm going to have to stop the camera again, raise the hood, and uh, just give it a tug from the bottom. Hopefully the bottom will come off as easily as the top did. This is going to be a really short video. All right, here it is with the old part completely disconnected. The six pins on the bottom were a little bit harder pull to get out, um, but eventually they came out. Now the only thing left is this washer fluid line, which I probably should have looked at before I started here. They ran this. My hands are too big to get down there. I don't know if you're even going to be able to see it on this video. It's all the way down, connects all the way, basically in the back of the tank, behind and underneath the computer, the uh, PCM. So that's going to be, somebody with smaller hands probably wouldn't have a hard time reaching down there, but for me, I'm probably going to pull the uh, washer fluid reservoir and just disconnect it from the bottom. I think that's the easiest thing to do. It could have made that a little bit more accessible, but I guess I imagine people don't need to change this very often. All right, here's just a quick uh, couple seconds clip with the tank removed. There was three bolts. Uh, I had to remove the cover for the air cleaner box as well uh, because the top bolt, or one of the top bolts was in the way, or the air cleaner box was in the way of one of the top bolts. Um, this is them. They were 10 millimeter, and uh, the bottom one was a... 13 millimeter so and what I really wanted to show you was if you can see this how disgusting it is underneath of there it looks like animals were building a nest almost so glad I took this off I almost started to take the computer out I've done that once but I think I'm glad I took this out can now be able to reach that hose a little better it's actually right over here but uh, I'll be able to give that a good cleaning underneath of there as well before I put everything back together. There's just a quick clip of the putting it back together process. Uh, the retainers are all in. Everything's pushed back down. I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty tight. It's hard to do those top clips. You just kind of got to push along. You got to line them up and then just push along and hope that everything gets in the right spot. Um, water. Cooling overflow bottle was a pain in the ass. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that you have to disconnect the antenna to put the new one on. And that's just a 8mm wrench to disconnect the antenna. So hopefully from here on out everything should be pretty straightforward getting it back together. Hope this is helpful of the finished work with the new one installed. As you can see, I think it looks much better. Of course, in the process of replacing it, I noticed I've got this teeny tiny little chip in my windshield here because, you know, Always some damn thing, but that's how it goes. Just doing what I can to keep the old truck running. Hope this video is helpful.